And before you guilty and unworthy how can I be forgiven and holy and I know I break your heart but you promised I could start all over and all the things I've done you've placed them each and everyone into the sea of forgetfulness you've placed all not some, all of my sins, for I'm the one who keeps reminding you over and over again into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east from the west. Seventy times seven, you've forgiven me and you keep cleansing me and placing my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. So, tell me something now. After God has placed my sins and your sins into the sea of forgetfulness, who has the right who has the right to go dig those sins up or dredge them if you can dredge the sea? Who has that right? Who is the great excavator who finds it necessary and so who finds it necessary, sorry, and so supremely important? To go dig up anybody's sins and not only do you go and dig up people's sins but you come you either throw it back in their face or you take it and you have it as the latest news item is that what we're about is that what as as children of god that we're really about and even if you don't lay claim to being any big time christian is that really what you should be about? Who among us is, is guiltless, guilt-free? Nobody. So what right then do we have if God has already forgiven something, somebody of, of their transgression? Why are we going to go dig it up and come and, and and display it like it's it's it, it's a great it, it's a great thing it's an achievement on our part there are some of us and i say us because we're all guilty of it in varying degrees so don't bother to try to take yourself out of it some of us just delight in shining the spotlight on others as if all sin don't care the same way the sin of stealing the pen 
from work carries the same weight as the sin of killing someone. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Maybe maybe on our law books it doesn't really look that way. But on the scales of God, they're all really the same thing. So are we really in a position to be condemning or ridiculing anybody? I think not. There's this very thin line, however. So, just so we don't mix up things. There's this very thin line between convicting someone of sin and judging the person. And let us, I want to, to, to make that, that distinction. So the convicting of someone is when you call, in, call out somebody on something that they've done. And sometimes, sometimes we really are doing things that we're not even aware of it. So when it is pointed out to you, and you realize within your heart of hearts that yes, you know something, I shouldn't have done that. Or even if you did realize what you were trying to cover it up, because you know, some of us are very good at that. But when somebody points it out to you and you go and whether you make restitution or whatever it is, but you fix it, then for heaven's sake, let it stay fixed and just leave it alone. But when somebody else comes on now, after you've convicted the person of, of whatever it is they did because you pointed it out to them, now you come and you make it a constant thing where you have to remind them, maybe not every day, but every time an opportunity presents itself, you jump on it. And we are not, we are not placed on the face of this earth to be little gods. And to be pointing out people's shortcomings. Once you've done it from a spirit, from a place of love, because that's important. So once you've done it from a place of love, and a correction has been made, there is absolutely no need for you to be to be digging it up and digging it up repeatedly. Romans eight verse one said, "There is therefore now no condemnation, not some condemnation, not." It's a bit of condemnation. There is absolutely no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So, when you used, when, when you know that somebody used to engage in a particular practice, so you knew somebody back in the day when the person was a little Roman. All right, fine. And you grew up in the community way back when. And... You know things about the person's family. You know things about the person's lifestyle. You know that the person used to go to school barefoot. Many days they didn't have lunch. Maybe it wasn't so bad with you. And then at some point later in life, things improve for this person. And yeah, the person might as as might be in your eyes kind of pop style. But that is not that is not even reasonable for you to go jump and say, ah, remember when this and remember when that. And you dig up something that the person did way back when they were a child or when the life or when the person's life wasn't as as well put together as it is now. Yes, remember when so and so and so and remember when you used to do this and you remember you No, eh, eh no. Stop it. Stop it. Seriously. We need to do better than that. John 3, no, 1 John 3, sorry, 1 John 3, verse 20. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. So if God knows everything, it means that it's just the things that you are hiding about your life and your skeletons that you have in your closet. God knows them. It's just that the rest of us probably don't know them yet. And because you don't have somebody who is coming to dig up your life the way you're digging up other people's lives. Yes. Stop it. Romans. Oh, no. Still on First John 3 verse 20. A very common area where, where things happen is between spouses. And please note, I'm saying spouses. I'm not saying that. Um, I'm not singling out. The male or the female, because we like to think that it's only men who 
who err and stray and do all of the things that wives like to jump up and and um, crucify their husbands for relentlessly. So I'm saying spouses because let me tell you something. And I don't care who picks and who please. I know some women. I know some women who would put, you know, we like to think, oh, men cheat and men this and men. Listen to me, man. I know some women sly as any fox. Sly as any fox. And they would cheat. Oh, oh, Lord. No, man. Men could learn some things from some women that I know. But I would, um, let's just stress on that. So, sometimes you, you, you have a spouse who, all right, all right, let, let me, let me zero in right here. So, now you have your husband and, and he, I, I don't know, maybe he failed to do something that he promised to do. Or, because all of us think that it's only the men have women out there. And I know the women have men out there too. But, you just never let them forget it, eh? You just never let them forget it. So, even though everything was sorted out, you went to counseling. And you're back together now as Mr. and Mrs. And you're presenting yourselves as um, model citizens and you're sitting in church together and you're holding hands and what have you but look the first opportunity wife gets oh remember when you did so and so and so and remember this and look here lady if it is that you are going to keep throwing this thing at your husband Look here, go about your business. Like seriously, go thy way and go about your business. Do not, it, it is unchristian. And it is not what you expect from, Not it's not the behavior of somebody who is going to call themselves a wife. Right? So you can be throwing things. And even as parents, your children do things from time to time. And then later on, the first at the, at the first sign of something else you jump up oh remember when you did this and remember then you did that and da, 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 and the whole history the whole history carry go bring come story start start up again no no it's wrong stop it romans 8 and verse 34 says who is to condemn can you answer that question who is to condemn Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. So, guess what? The condemnation and the judgment thing is not, not your department. You don't have the right. You don't have the moral authority. And whatever others a black and find to, 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 to attach to it. You don't have it. John, John 8 and verse 11 says, she said, and this is just part of this, part of this, and it's, it's coming from the whole, the whole story of the woman caught in adultery. Please note, the woman was caught in adultery and she was not adultering by herself. But that's, a surf another time she said no one lord and jesus said neither do i condemn you go and from no one say no more so you see when your husband or your wife has done whatever i am not in your relationship i don't know what it is and even when it burn you to your toe if you are going to forgive and stay then forgive and stay and stop bringing it up at every available opportunity so if God has forgiven and God has has and God is no longer condemning then you go you sin no more and nobody has the right to keep bringing it up. 
first John one, first John chapter one and verse seven and uh, and also verse nine. So first John one verse seven says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. And verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there, there we have it. Jesus Christ cleanses us from our unrighteousness. And the person whom you wronged forgives you. Or at least they say they forgive you. But true forgiveness means that you are do not jump into a back hole and start digging up and digging up things all over again. Christ cleanses us when we confess our sins and he remembers them no more. So sometimes, you know, some of us, our memory is a little bit too good so maybe you need to start making the memory not so good again because if you keep bringing this thing up and reopening the wound and taking off the bandages then did you really forgive i think not second corinthians 5 verse 17 therefore if anyone is in christ he's a new creation the old has passed away Behold, the new has come. So when the old has passed away, please do not go and bring it back front and center in your life, in your relationships. It is gone. We are not going to sing, take me back, dear Lord. No, we left that point and we are now at a new place and a new part a new position in our lives Isaiah 43 verse 25 I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and I will not remember your sins but hold on a moment now with all of this and Christ not remembering our sins anymore. That does not give us license to go and do that which that for which we were forgiven. Because the, the, this whole redemption and this whole keeping things clean is is two sided. So I can't sit here and blame the people who like to go and pick up old story without also pointing out that when we have been forgiven we ought not to return you say you see we're not going to do like dogs and return to your bum no you ought not to return to that for which you asked forgiveness if you keep going back to that situation then you really can't blame people for digging up your story eh? Because you're really giving them fodder and, and, and ammunition to come, to come back at you repeatedly. So you have a responsibility. Isaiah 55 verse 7 shows us the responsibility that we have. Which is, let the wicked forsake his way. So you can't go back to doing the same thing. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let me say that again. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. That he may have compassion on him. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. So in addition to. My plea or my admonition to people 
to stop digging up, I am also saying you cannot keep going back. You cannot keep returning and doing and repeating. When you're finished with something, you have confessed your sin one to another. Don't do it again. Jeremiah 31, verse 34. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I, please note, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Into the sea of forgetfulness. See, that's where God has thrown that. John 5 verse 24. Truly, truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment but has passed from death to life. And we pass from death to life when we decide, when we take and make a conscious decision to not keep sinning. Psalm, Psalm 103 and verse 10 says, He does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. Isn't that comforting? Isn't that the absolute, absolute best thing that could happen to us? He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. So why then are we dealing with others according to their sins? Why are we repaying others according to to their iniquities. If God is not do doing that, if God is not dealing with us as we deserve to be dealt with, then why are we not extending the same grace to others? Psalm 34 verse 22, the Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Romans 4 and verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. So when you put those things away and you recommit to God, then we, we, we put on this, this cloak of, or if we should, put on some cloak of of righteousness because we're supposed to be reflecting God and if God is in our lives then we are or we ought to be a reflection of him and my final verse Romans 8 verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death so, my plea is that we stop digging things up. And for some of us, we'll never stop digging until somebody does the digging on us and the digging in our lives. And then the, the, the spotlight will shine on what you have done and what you thought you had covered up under cement. So, forgive and forget. Let us practice to forgive and to forget. So, until we meet again doing my father's business, Take care.